Welcome. Thank you for joining our Drive Electric Week virtual session, Electric Lunch with the Austin Energy EV team. I'm Aaron Choate, the president of Austin EV, the local chapter of the Electric Vehicle Association. Amy Ashley and Bobby Goodsey are here today representing Austin Energy, and they will present for roughly half an hour, and then we will open the floor for questions. Feel free to put your questions in the chat and I will share them or invite you to unmute so you can ask your question yourself. Okay, Amy and Bobby, please go ahead and get started. Hi everybody, my name is Amy Ashley. I'm with Austin Energy, Electric Vehicles and Emerging Technologies team. My role there is I'm the senior lead for the EV equity program. I've been with the team now for almost five years um, and I'm working to um, accelerate electric vehicle adoption with the focus on reaching our historically underserved uh, neighbors. Hey everyone, I'm Bobby Gotze. I'm with the Electric Vehicle and Emerging Technologies Program. Uh, my focus is outreach education in the community. Uh, may have met a few of you guys out on the, on the roads uh, before this, but glad to be here today to share some interesting information with y'all and some updates on what's going on with Austin Energy in the community. We thought it would be kind of fun to start out with something that um, was launched just, um, I believe, yesterday on our social media. Um, it's kind of fun little snapshot there. Um, we took a poll and we found this quite interesting um, of how many people um, are driving electric vehicles now and um, how many are considering. And um, it's just kind of fun to touch base with the community to, to see where, where people are. And um, we, we love these numbers here. And you know the work that that Bobby and and I do and the team, um, we you know we're working to accelerate that adoption and and we also are just kind of working to uh, to uh, break the ice um, so to speak so that we know people that are thinking about a new vehicle, you know maybe they've never considered driving electric so that's really our job is to to capture that next um, purchase. Um, or next rental um, or lease rather. Um, so we just wanted to share that as a little fun bit and also want to encourage you, if you haven't joined our Facebook page, please jump on um, and join that um, because there's a lot of great um, local specific EV information that we post there regularly. Um, we, we really have a nice community there and we also do kind of keep in touch with what's happening on the scene nationally as well. Next slide, please. So we wanted to um, kind of give this um, kind of overview, um, kind of stepping back a moment to understand why we're doing the work that we're doing. And, you know, um, Austin Energy, we are a municipality. Um, we uh, answer to our council, our city council. Um, those are folks are kind of like our board and everything that we do goes through them and gets approved. And we have wonderful support there, um, just so you know, around um, climate impact, around electric vehicles in particular. Um, the city of Austin is working uh, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. There's a new climate equity plan that's being approved right now, going through council and um, has been out for comment um, for, for several months. You can check that out online as well. Um, but it's sort of an, an update to an existing document that really focuses on equity. It also really focuses on um, sort of accelerating those numbers for uh, net zero. We're now at um, reaching net zero by, by 2040. Um, we also wanna lead by example. So we're doing things like transitioning our fleet right now uh, to electric vehicles. We've got about 180 vehicles that have transitioned. Um, we intend to reach, I think the number is three, 330. That probably will grow in, in time, but um, we know that it's going to um, really lead by example and, and help us walk the talk um, with the community. So we're pretty excited about that to actually see it happening. And we also, I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but we're supporting our electric bus system that's going 100% electric as well. Um, our team, um, we were established as a call to action, um, you know, from, from city council to work on um, not only these greenhouse gas emissions, but to support and pioneer emerging technologies, um, making sure that we are reaching sustainability and, and efficiencies overall. Um, so I, one thing I want to touch base on something that happened, you know, this technology, um, I mean, it's changing 
you know, by the month. And, and we work really hard to keep up with that changing um, technology. The smart mobility roadmap map is something that our team was very focused on. We were um, uh, part of the uh, writers of this published piece. And this happened about three and a half years ago. And we're finally starting to see some of that stuff lift off the ground, which the result of that is that climate, climate equity plan, which has a heavy transportation electrification component. The smart mobility map really focuses on um, these three technologies coming together and that's shared electric and autonomous. Um, so, you know, that was early visioning and, um, you know, we're starting to, to roll these things out. With that said, let's go to the next slide, please. Bobby. Yeah, so I was just going to get up, uh, kind of give you guys an update on some of our programs that we have in place. Uh, the Plug in Everywhere program uh, has been around for, for quite a while now. Uh, and as Amy said, we're, our team is, believe it or not, and I have a slide on here later, but we're 10 years into it. Uh, so it's a uh, pop of our manager was speaking about it the other day, just uh, how, you know, how Austin and Austin Energy really saw the vision a long time ago. So it, uh, it's been an interesting 10 years and, and a lot of things have changed as Amy said, with technology. But the Plug in Everywhere program, as you all know, is $4.17 a month. It gives you unlimited access to all the level two charging infrastructure in town. But we also have the DC fast charges that we rolled out uh, in the last 15 months. And that's 21 cents to plug in, to plug out on those. Um, and we're seeing uh, some nice numbers from those. Looks like those are getting used. And I'll explain that a little bit later. But, uh, and then we also have all the rebate programs still in place. We're still focused on, like Amy said, just uh, encouraging uh, infrastructure to be installed at commercial properties throughout the city. Uh, so we have the, the rebate programs in place for, for multifamily and commercial properties, workplace charging uh, up to $4,000 uh, for installation and cost of the equipment. And then we also have rebates for homes. So if you bought a vehicle and you wanted to put a level two charger at home, uh, we have rebates for that as well. You guys know probably about that, but if not, uh, it's at our it's on our website uh, to look at, and it's up to twelve hundred dollars for for home rebates. And then we have the fleet and public infrastructure. So we'll talk about this a little bit today. But there's a lot of stuff that we work on behind the scenes with the city, uh, the fleet, the Cap Metro, which is exciting information that we'll share in a bit uh, with Cap Metro. But we helped with with the bus depot for those folks. And we do some, uh, we do the e-bike program, and Amy will touch on that later. Uh, and then we also, we, we kind of pilot different things to figure out what works and what doesn't. And quite frankly, some things have been really successful and some things at times have not been so successful. Um, but those pilots that we do here locally, you know, we, we, it's great that we're impacting the air in Austin and we're living a better life here in Austin, but, but ideally the world is, is uh, it, we're impacting the world with this stuff. But so Amy and I speak to a lot of different cities, um, we, we, uh, a lot of different cities to, uh, to share what's working and what's not working. Our EV360 pilot program, we, we, uh, we, we got a hundred customers really quick involved with that, which is kind of a, a program to help encourage off peak uh, charging. It's been successful, but the reality of it is the pricing was been a, was a little bit off, and so we're trying to regroup on that and see what what a better pricing structure could be to encourage that off peak charging. Um, and then EVs for schools, which has been a big hit, and Amy's going to touch on that, so I won't I won't talk about that right now. And our e ride program, we, not everybody knows it, but we're focused on all things electric, all transportation electric. So. Um, our B cycle programs going electric, and we've been working with them quite a bit on their program, which is which is called Metro Bikes now. And we also offer a rebate to anybody who wants to get an electric bike, or scooter, uh, up to four hundred dollars off. Go ahead with the next slide. And Aaron, are we taking questions at the end? Or are we going to talk during it? I, I, I'm I'm open to questions during it if you guys want to, but we can hold the questions till the end is fine as well. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. Typically, we, I've been holding them to the end unless it's really very specific to the slide that you're on. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll let you manage that. Thank you. Uh, the fast charging rollout. Uh, I wish I could get a show of hands, but uh, hopefully you guys have, have tried the fast chargers if you needed it or just tried it just to kind of see how it works. Uh, we've rolled them all out now that 
throughout the city. And I, I put uh, some of the address locations on here. Uh, we finally finished our electric drive project. So we have eight fast chargers down now on electric drive. Some of you have been around uh, when, we, when we launched electric drive, I think in 2017. So it's an exciting, it's just exciting to see electric drive really become uh, a street of, of uh, chargers, which is, which is really cool for us. Uh, go ahead with the next slide. And I know it's a lot of information, but we just wanted to share some of this stuff with y'all. So here's, we, we did several things. We created these wraps for the fast chargers to kind of highlight some of our programs, solar, and, and uh, let everybody know that we're powering all the, all this fuel is 100% green fuel. It's all part of our uh, uh, green choice program. And so we wanted to make sure we highlighted that because it's one of the things we're proud of in our community that uh, when people say, well, am I, am I driving on clean fuel, even though I have an electric vehicle, I get that question asked me when I'm at outreach events. And we can, we can, we can guarantee 100% of the time if you plug into one of our public charging stations, you'll get clean energy from our Green Choice Texas Wind uh, program. And uh, we've also did, we did some things to try to spruce up the, the view of it. We, we added uh, uh, paint in the parking, kind of made them green zones and, and uh, tried to, try to create a kind of a fun vibe to it. Uh, so people that didn't have electric vehicles could kind of out of their curiosity, could kind of go and look and see what was going on over there. So really excited about it. Uh, go ahead with the next slide. And then I just, I wanted to share some of the data with y'all. Uh, and this is public information, so I'm not, uh, it's no secret, but we don't, we don't necessarily publish it. Uh, anywhere, but I wanted you to see how the growth year over year has been for public uh, charging installations. When we started, we started with 113 stations that Austin Energy chose the locations. We, we received a grant from, from the uh, DO, uh, DOE, but since then we've created that rebate program and the rebate program set up to just kind of encourage adoption, uh, help with the cost of the infrastructure, and year over year, you can see it's just been just going up and up and up. And so now we have 26 fast chargers throughout the city. Uh, we have over a thousand level two charging stations throughout the city, our charging ports throughout the city, almost 300 locations. I think we're at 300 locations now. This slide is a little bit older, but I just wanted you guys to see just how it ramp is ramping up. It's exciting information. I think we are. I think I recently read we're number four, we're the number four city in the country as far as infrastructure being in place. Uh, so we're really proud of that. Go ahead with the next slide. And then I thought this was kind of interesting. I wanted to share this with y'all. Uh, this is kind of the EV charging eco ecosystem here in Austin. This is kind of uh, what we're seeing throughout all the cities though. People prefer to charge at home, it's convenient. I get home, I plug in my, my uh, electric vehicle, I go inside, I plug in my cell phone, and I, I forget about it to the next day. So uh, people just like that. It's, it's easy, it's uh, simple to do. They can plug into their 110 volt outlet or their level two at home. So uh, the actual numbers are 84%, 85% of the people want to charge at home. So there, there's kind of a breakdown of where people charge uh, throughout the city. Uh, the fast chargers has increased a little bit, uh, now that we've added the 26 stations throughout the city, uh, we're seeing some pickup in the fast chargers as well. Um, but uh, go ahead with the next slide. And then I thought this was interesting. I wanted you, you all to know kind of where we're at right now. Uh, EV adoption is, is, is as much as the uh, charging infrastructure has gone up like this, so is EV adoption. We've been averaging and even through the pandemic, uh, we've been averaging 350 vehicles a, uh, a quarter, I believe. And, and so we're up to about 16,000 EVs in, in the territory, Travis and Williamson counties. We get that information from EPRI, which is a, which is a company who gathers that data for us. But uh, it just, it's good news. It's going in the right direction. Uh, and we'll talk more about how we're kind of marketing that and buy the buyer's guide that's, that we've launched and how that's helping customers get the car that they want, new or used. Uh, but just, just, just exciting information. Uh, go ahead with the next slide. And then here's information that I thought was interesting. This is 
this is kind of what the estimates are and what ERCOT thinks is going to go on. And, and uh, so they're thinking 52,300 EVs in Austin by 2023. Um, again, you know that it's, it's almost 2022 and we're at 16,000. So we're not sure about how that's going to, the numbers are going to play out. We know that one vehicle can really turn the tide. Tesla is an example of that. When that model, uh, the, when the uh, basic model came out, the 35,000 model uh, came out, we had a real uptick in, in the market with, with vehicles. We think that when the truck launches and there's a few other vehicles coming out next year that are priced right, um, that are affordable, and we think that, that we'll see a real uptick. They call it a hockey puck stick where you can kind of see where it just kind of takes off. So we're anticipating that, but I'm not sure if it's going to be quite um, 2023. I think I think it could be right in the middle of 2023. So we'll see how this goes. But I just wanted to share the information with y'all. I thought you'd find that interesting. Uh, go ahead with the next uh, slide. And then I'll, let me let Amy take over on this. Yeah, great. Thank you, Bobby. This is a great uh, segue into um, you know how we work on community building. Um, one of the programs you might have heard of, it's called EVs for Schools. Um, we launched um, initially, it's electric vehicle charging combined with curriculum um, at public schools. Um, the first schools we launched in in the pilot are Title I schools because we want to make sure we're reaching um, our students, um, you know, economically disadvantaged families. Um, so we know they don't have the resources that some of the other schools have. And probably parents aren't driving EVs there. Um, you know, we... Um, definitely um, know that teachers are in EVs. We um, submitted a survey with AISD, who is our um, district partner on this. And um, we had several teachers that were requesting workplace charging and, and really wanted this program. Um, what's happening is the students are seeing their heroes, the teachers plugging in their, their vehicles for workplace charging, and then they're getting the curriculum and it's creating an educational living lab. And then the kids are getting excited about it and they're taking this um, information home and it's, it's shifting the conversation um, at the dinner table with the parents. Um, the kids, we love working with the kids. We realize that, you know, they are super engaged. Um, they're highly in, in tune to climate impact. They know that um, this will be one of the greatest challenges of their generation, and um, they want to be a part of the solution. So it's been amazing. As I said, we started in four schools. We're currently now in 122 schools with over 800 teachers who have gone through the training um, in Central Texas. And we are also working and mentoring other cities across the country um, to create their own EVs for Schools program um, utilizing this curriculum, which is through one of our program partners called EcoRise. Um, one of the fun things that we do in, in this program is we go into the schools and provide an EV workshop. We do summer camps with disadvantaged communities, students for STEM programs. Um, we've created a companion um, virtual reality piece that's utilized and we, we use it with the students. They love it and they just, you know, they're, they're very quick with the technology. We also use it with the adults whenever we do outreach because the adults have a good time too. And I you know, have to confess the kids um, kind of get it um, a lot more quickly than some of the adults do. I know I, I know the first time I, I tried virtual reality, I was like, wow, a little uh, disoriented, but um, we've, we've had some success with it. We've been able to deploy this virtually in, in some virtual capacity as well. We also have now available um, uh, the video, animated video of this virtual reality, um, just so we can continue to share in this um, time of distance learning um, until we get a little bit more able to get out in the community when it's it's uh, COVID safe. Um, so um, I guess next slide, please. Um, the e-bike rebates, I think, you know, Bobby touched a little bit on this, um, but we are, it, Speaking of the pandemic, we have really seen this be what you call the year of e-bikes. Um, we've had tons of individuals that have just decided they want that independence um, on their own on their own e-bike, and they, you know, we've seen ridership and public transit go down, but the e-bikes have seen an uptick, and that's also in our bike share system here in Austin, the Met, which has been been rebranded from Austin B Cycle to Metro Bike. And Metro Bike, we have supported with our rebate program um, to help them 
launch an electric bike fleet. Um, and we're also doing some specific outreach with video campaigns to get people on uh, these electric bikes for bike share for first and last mile solutions. We have some targeted um, programming that we're doing with our um, HACA, the Housing Authority of the City of Austin, to um, really help break that cycle of poverty by providing um, a reliable transportation, new mobility for first and last mile solutions. Um, we also offer um, uh, that $400 per bike for fleets. And I mentioned that for vehicle, but we also have um, other organizations and entities, for example, Bike Texas, who we have um, been supporting with rebates so they can have education um, with electric bikes and, and they bring their fleets out and we're working hand in hand with them on some of this outreach. We've conducted hundreds of e-bike demos um, in the community and we'll continue to do so. We find that when people get their hands on the technology, they really start to see themselves in that in that new technology. Um, it's a lot like when, when we get people riding and driving in electric cars. Um, we see, um, we really see that transition and, and it's called in, in the industry, um, getting butts in seats. So we really are working to bring that technology to the community to have those firsthand interactions. Um, and we're hoping again, um, when COVID is a little more under control that um, we can um, conduct more of those activities in person. Next slide, please. Equity and inclusion, I'm, I've been kind of, um, building up to that throughout all of this conversation here. You know, we really are supporting um, uh, equity through the city of Austin. It's a huge initiative with Austin Energy. Um, you know, we really um, have this vision of creating um, a, a diverse and inclusive environment for technologies, making sure that people are not lost in the technology. Um, why transportation? Well, we know that um, transportation is the number two household expense and we also know that um, transportation and housing are intrinsically connected. So we wanna make sure that people who have typically been left out of technology um, are you know, really being brought to the front of the line on this stuff. So it's been real exciting to build that community and build the trust and actually deploy um, in our underserved communities. Uh, next slide, please. Bikes for everyone. And this is, again, that Haka campaign I mentioned. Um, the two people um, you see on the bottom there were mother and son, uh, BJ and Sandra, and they are um, representatives of Haka. They work in Haka. They're beloved community members there, and they are e-bike riders, and they are uh, featured in um, our training video that we created. And that was just a great experience. Bobby and I will be attending a national night out on Tuesday virtually with Haka, which can reach up to 19,000 residents who are living um, in, in affordable housing in, at Haka. And um, we look forward to introducing for the first time uh, Metro Bikes through these videos uh, training campaign. And then again, we'll be in those communities in person. Uh, next slide, please. So Capital Metro Bus Electrification, um, exciting news announced this week. Um, Cap Metro um, is um, going to be, um, has, has secured the funding for 197 new electric buses. Um, on Earth Day in 2019, um, the organization announced that they would be going electric. Um, we're pretty excited um, to, to know that because as a city, we have to lead by example. Um, but now um, they have 12 electric buses on, on the street right now, currently, and now they've got the funding to really accelerate getting the rest of the fleet transitioned into electric. Um, and it will you know, eventually be up to uh, 400 buses um, in Austin that will you know, be carbon free. So we're very excited about that. Austin Energy is supporting the um, charging depot um, and we, um, are you know, really excited for that partnership. And um, it's just great to see you know, where Austin is heading um, with electric transportation. The bottom picture there is a great example of community um, uh, engagement where Cap Metro um, launched their very first electric bus in Austin with um, the students of Campbell Elementary. The reason why they did that is because that bus is gonna be going in that neighborhood there. And these children, 
designed the um, electric bus uh, wraps, as you can see the artwork in the back. And so when you see that beautiful artwork, that's done by real kiddos that are trying to uh, make a difference in the world. Next slide, please. Bobby, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand this off to you. Thanks. Um, so I know this is a lot of words. I just wanted you guys to see. Uh, so we have a, you know, obviously we have limited funding all the way around, but uh, we have a marketing campaign, a marketing effort. Uh, and I just wanted to kind of highlight our focus on it. Um, you know, that we're trying to get the messaging out to people. And, and I know the people on this, on this uh, meeting are aware of electric vehicles, but there's a lot of people that are in various stages of learning about electrification and transportation and how it fits in. And do I really have to do, what about the oil changes? And uh, how often do I get to go to the mechanic or not get to go to the mechanic now that I have an electric vehicle? So we, we really focus on these, these parameters. Like it's easy to use, easy to maintain, no more oil changes. I don't have to go to the maintenance shop as much. Uh, easy to fuel, it's so easy to just plug in my, my car in the garage or, pl or plug it in while I'm at work. Uh, they're easy and fun to drive and fast. One of the questions I used to get asked quite a bit, I don't get asked very often anymore, but I used to get asked, well, isn't that, kind of, aren't they kind of like uh, golf carts? And, and I got to explain that that Nissan Leaf is gonna outrun that Corvette uh, at, at the red light. So, you know, just trying to, to educate people about driving electric. Um, and then, uh, so we, we kind of focus on these things. I just wanted, I thought this was interesting to share with y'all, uh, but definitely uh, the evolution is here. So, uh, and we're trying to get people to say goodbye to gas and say hello to electric. So how are you gonna say goodbye to gas and how are you gonna say hello to electric fuel? Go ahead with the next slide. So this is something exciting. I updated y'all last year on our buyer's guide. We, we created an auto dealership initiative that focused on the complete customer experience. And we, we created this out of listening to the customers going to dealerships and frustration when they were at the dealerships from just either the, the salesperson not knowing enough about the car to, to explain electric fuel to them, to being turned away from electric vehicles and turned on to gas vehicles because that's, where the, that's what the salesperson is comfortable with or, the, or the, the customer just not knowing enough about the electric vehicle before they get there. And so we created this buyer's guide and it's ev.austinenergy.com. And it's, it's really been successful this last year and a half. Um, and we had phase one when I told you all about it last time. So phase one was, was learning about electric fuel, learning where to charge, you know, the Stevie the EV11 T-Rex is on there with the videos. Uh, and what electric fuel looks like and what do the rebates look like and kind of easy, makes it easy for you to navigate the, um, the tax rebates and things like that. And then what cars are available, just what cars are out there. Well, then we worked with the dealerships this past year to actually put on the website, and this is really cool, real-time data, uh, actually three times a day, they load real-time information on what electric vehicles are available on what lot. So if you wanted a, if you figured out that you wanted a four-door, you know, sedan, red, leather seats, electric that goes 240 miles, where do I find that car? And there's new and used vehicles on this buyer's guide. So now you can scroll down, scroll through all the vehicles, and yet you can find a vehicle that you like and you want to go test drive and you can know exactly what dealership has it. On their on the in their parking lot, and so really great addition to this buyer's guide, um, and and so it, it helps the customer learn, narrow down what car they're interested, what lots actually got it available to them, what car dealership has it available, and and then they can go communicate with that dealership and set up a test drive and go test drive it. What's really great about it is we added some beacons. We call them beacons, but they're they're like kiosks at the dealerships. And we have them just at a few dealerships right now, but it allows the salesperson to, to communicate with the potential buyer. And so imagine being a salesperson that makes money off selling the vehicles. And so they don't care what vehicle they sell necessarily, as long as they sell a vehicle and make money, right? So this allows them to know that the, when the person comes in and says, oh, I, I'm here to test drive the car that I saw on the buyer's guide. And I, I, I know kind of about electric vehicles, you know, why should I buy this car? And then the salesperson can then go 
man, this person is already, is already interested in the electric vehicle. All I got to do is close the deal. So it makes everybody more comfortable throughout the process. And these kiosks, these kiosks at the dealerships help them kind of, it's kind of like a, just a, it's almost like a big Android phone, but it's giant, six feet tall. And they can kind of show them on the map where to charge and how easy it is to fuel and what it, what it looks like if you plugged in at your house and a clock went around and how much charge you would have the next day when you left the house. It's real easy to understand electric fuel. So this has been, this has been something we're really proud of. And we've actually uh, been uh, recognized throughout the country in the last year for this. Let's go ahead with the next slide. That's uh, that's uh, so that's part of our marketing campaign. Again, we have limited funds, but we try to do things that are creative. Uh, this is our social media campaign and our digital advertisement. So you see this on Do Five One Two if you're familiar with Do Five One Two, or you see this on our on our social media pages throughout the. Are they they pop up everywhere actually? Uh, go ahead with the next slide. So the web metrics on this. I again, I'm trying to give you you all just interesting nuggets to what's going on with us and, and, and kind of showing what the progress has been. But that buyer's guide has gotten over 124,000 visitors and 54,000 are new users. And I think that number is actually bigger than that. This is, this is a little, let's see, that's a little bit, well, that's August 21st, I think is when it was big. So I, I feel like it's a little higher than that actually, but we've gotten so much it's over 10,000 unique visitors a month that have been coming to the website in the last 12 months. It's just really been, uh, really been, really been successful as far as educating the community, we think. Um, and then Austin, Austin Energy has a website too, a, a web page to pluginaustin.com. It's a, it's a government city website, so it's a little clunky. There's a lot of words. That's why we really like that buyer's guide. It's, it's easier to navigate. But the, the pluginaustin.com webpage also has good information on there. And we were getting a lot of views on it too. So I just wanted to share that information with y'all. Go ahead with the next slide. And so I was telling you, we've been recognized for this buyer's guide. Uh, and we're really proud of it as a team. And, and, and Austin Energy is really proud of it. But we were recognized three different awards this year. Uh, and it's, it's, it's about customer engagement. So it's focused on that. And that one, one of the awards was the customer engagement best practices award. And then we won a smart 50 award for being a, a influential smart cities project. And then we also, for our marketing campaign efforts, which you saw Stevie holding the sign up saying, go check out the buyer's guide. Chartwell is one of the most prestigious uh, electric uh, marketing uh, recognizable recognition for marketing efforts. And we won the gold communication award, meaning uh, uh, first place uh, in the Chartwell campaign. So, we, I mean, for the campaign, for and so really proud of it as a team. And it really just shows the customers like it. It's easy to use, and it's getting people to uh, think about electric vehicles. Uh, go ahead with the next slide. And you guys all know about uh, Stevie the EV11 T Rex. Uh, I have a little nugget here at the end. We're going to share with you. Amy and I are going to share with you, but. Uh, Amy and I work with Stevie quite a bit. Uh, Stevie's a, uh, just a, just so fun to work with. Uh, Stevie loves electric vehicles and wants everybody to say goodbye to gas forever. So uh, check out the videos and there, there could be a few new ones coming out, but definitely join the social media camp or social media site on Facebook uh, because Stevie jumps on there quite a bit to uh, share information and there's little videos Stevie has to update everybody on what's going on. Go ahead with the next slide. So Stevie, uh, recently we found out, Amy and I found out Stevie has a cousin and, uh, in Indianapolis. And Stevie's cousin in Indianapolis is, is just as passionate as Stevie about uh, saying goodbye to gas and saying hello to electric. And so there's a big campaign going on right now in Indianapolis uh, and, and Stevie's cousin, uh, the dino is, uh, is leading the charge up there. And so this is a little picture of the two of them hanging out on a, on a beautiful fall afternoon. And I thought I would show a video here at the end and then we can take questions and, and, uh, and Amy, I'll make sure I caught everything here, Amy, but, um, go with the next slide. I think it's the video on the next one. 
Yeah, is there anything, Amy, you want to add to that before we look at the slide or is it the video? No, I think I think you're good. I'll just leave some time for questions. Okay. Make sure the volume's on if we can hear it. There might not be volume. If there's not, we'll we'll just talk to talk. There, <laughs> there should be a setting, Aaron, on your that says modern volume. world isn't so. There you go. Sometimes being an evolved dinosaur in the modern world isn't so easy. Take the office from the politics, Chad, to making sure I look busy and dealing with technology. He's probably still on dial-up. <laughs> but one thing that is easy, my electric vehicle. I just get in and go. No oil changes, no gas stations. Who's the dinosaur now, Chad? Don't be a fossil. Drive electric. Um, now, is that not fun? Um, so we're, we're excited to be uh, hanging out with, with Dino from, from Indianapolis. And, and you'll see maybe some collaborations in the next year. Uh, maybe, maybe the T-Rex becomes the mascot for, for, for going electric uh, throughout the whole United States. Who knows? But it's exciting and it's fun. And, and we might do a dance off or some other things. So stay tuned to that. And here's our team. Um, you all have met probably several of them, but we're not a big team, but every one of us is passionate about this. We believe in what we're doing. Uh, we love what we're doing. We love working together and, 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 and trying to come up with ways that not only help our community, but uh, help other communities too. And, and, uh, and we share that knowledge as often as people want us to. So, uh, and so there's the team and, and uh, thank you guys for listening. We'll take questions and we might have one more surprise, but go ahead. Sorry. Um, so earlier on, we had we did have one question about the uh, the rebate program uh, for the home level two EVSE. Is that per home or per vehicle or per person's lifetime? Um, the answer to that is it's per home, and um, and as of now, Amy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's one one per lifetime yeah i mean that's a great question i don't think i've had that question before but we'll we'll go and check it out i mean i do know that one of the things oops here i am i do know that one of the things that um comes up is what happens when you have your you know home charger put into your garage and then you move and, and how do you transition that ownership if, if that's something that's wanted so um, what we can do, I, I appreciate your question. Um, let us get back to you on that. And Aaron, how would it be best? Because I'm sure there's other people on the call that want to know the answer to that. Um, how best would it be to, to filter that answer back? So I have um, all of the registrants' um, email addresses um, on the Drive Electric Week uh, website. And so I, it, once you get an answer back to me, I can share it out to them. questions on there too in the chat do you want to go to those yeah i'm going through them now the so the um let's see ken would you like to unmute and ask your question which here you are yes i just figured out how to unmute <clears throat> um yeah i was one of the participants on the time of use pilot program several years ago that program was dropped and I don't know why. Um, I thought it was a great program. It, it had a bigger umbrella than just EVs because it allowed, well, it allowed one to spread out the electric requirements of the city by going off peak. Now I know that there is currently a time of use pilot program, but it, I've looked at the rate structure, and it yeah. it would not get me to to want to um, to charge my car in the middle of the night, which is what I did under the old time of use program. All of my charging was done in off peak hours. Now, because my vehicle gets free supercharging from Tesla, I do most of my charging at the superchargers, 
which doesn't help the city at all because I'm doing that charging during the day. All of the charging that's done at city um, charging stations are probably done during the day. So if you can get people to charge at home, the city's better off. Is there any chance of resurrecting a real time of use charging program or real time of use electric rate program? Yeah, um, can I, the, the answer is yes to we're trying to figure that out and we're just dragging our feet quite frankly on it as a, as a city uh, department, Austin Energy. You know, we've done good things with the demand response, like the, the, the AC, um, the uh, thermostats and, and some other programs, but the time of use was, was something that it was just, it's clunky from our end, from the internal side of things. And so they just have to figure it out. So I don't have an answer. The answer is yes, they would we would like to do that as a city. We, if we can get encourage people to charge at night, you know, Texas, West Texas wind is, is plentiful at night. And so if we can get people charging at night, it's just a win for everybody. Like you're saying, it's cheap energy that's clean energy. And so the answer to your question is, yeah, we're trying to figure that out. We, we tried in our group to come up with that Austin 360 or EV 360 program, which you're speaking of. And you're right. Um, that was the pilot. We did the pilot. And although, and that's clunky too, because we were having you add a, a separate meter and that's, and it's just, it's, that's too much. Like on the front end, you had to pay $150 for the meter. So we're, it's just something we're trying to figure out. We're trying to, we're going to re, try to restart that program with a different pay, pay system because Ken, you're right. It, it didn't make, for a lot of people, it didn't make sense to join the program because they're not paying $30 a month to charge at home. Plug, they plug in every night and you're not, you're not paying $30 to charge at home. So it's not encouraging people to move the needle to charge in the middle of the night, like you're saying. So uh, to answer your question is, yeah, we're still working on some things like that. Uh, hang in there. I think we'll come up with something uh, sooner than later because it's a real win, especially for, you know, everybody gets so concerned about the peak. You know, everybody comes home from working at 3.30 or 4 o'clock where the AC, you know, takes off and, and we have these peak demand. Well, peak demand times cost Austin Energy, a, a lot of city of Austin, a lot of money. And it's difficult because obviously that money gets that those uh, the cost gets spread out amongst the community. And so we try to prevent those peaks. And if you could get people to charge at night, it's just a win for everybody. So as you know, most, most electric vehicles can, can time their charging. So that, I mean, I used to start charging at midnight every night. And yeah. if you do that, you can pretty much remove all electric vehicles from on peak charging. No, we, I, we agree completely. I will hold my breath. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to suggest we uh, move on to Kevin Carafa's question. Hey, Amy. Hey, Godsey. Thanks so much for hosting today. Just was very interested when you host, you posted about the e-bikes and the e-buses. And I was just curious if you folks are working with a vendor right now for that transformation or if you're looking for new vendors, how's that process going? Yeah, um, great question. Um, as we look at how the city is moving to uh, electric transportation, um, at Metro, there was an RFP um, process that occurred and they um, landed on two providers. One is called Proterra Buses, and then the next is called um, New Flyer of America. Um, so I think that's already in progress. Um, as far as e bike programs, so the um, Metro bike program, that bike share program we talked about now lives under Cap Metro and it's just a brilliant connect to, um, you know, connecting technologies because it's, it helps with that first and last mile solution. And so they're working in tandem on siting these locations and really trying to help reach where those gaps are, particularly with our vulnerable neighborhoods. That um, vendor with the e-bikes for Metro bike is called Trek. And that's another one of those that was decided um, from a city perspective with the RFP. Um, and also truck um, handles B cycle programs across the country and they have a lot of experience in providing these real industrial type um, e-bikes. Um, did that answer your question? As far as the, uh, real quick, uh, as far as the e-bike rebates go, uh, the team works with local companies so 
uh, I think there's seven or eight dealerships that are certified to be on the, on the, uh, that can sell e-bikes right now in our community. Uh, and that number could grow depending on if people want to, I think there's a few criteria that they have to meet. We try to do local businesses because of obviously we want to keep Austin local and keep Austin weird as they say. So we want to keep the, uh, the focus on local companies if we can. Uh, and so we do that with the, re the rebate program. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So, Aaron, I know we got like 10 minutes left. Let me just say, I'm gonna, Aaron, I'm going to let you manage this too. See this shirt I have on? So, uh, so Aaron's going to randomly, uh, we, I don't know how we can do this. We can randomly pick two of the questions that people have asked and, uh, and then get their addresses and I'll send you guys t-shirts. I just need to know your sizes and uh, your address. So, uh, we'll randomly pick two of the questions that were asked today, uh, unless you have a really cool one that you come up with that I really love. Go ahead with the next question. Go ahead, Lawrence. Okay. Um, okay. What I was wondering is, does the city have any uh, level two chargers in residential areas where people who can't charge at home or would rather get the free energy from the city can charge overnight and then go um, home, you know, walk home and go to bed? And um, one of the priorities um, that our team is working on right now is expanding our infrastructure and in multifamily uh, properties. Right now, we're reaching about 26,000 uh, residents in, through multifamily. I think we're, Bobby, can you tell us the uh, number of um, multifamily residents we are currently in right now for community charging? It's close to 100 uh, or 75 apartments, I think, have them, uh, uh, communities. And it, that works well, and I don't want to interrupt you, but yeah, the street parking and stuff has been a little bit of a, uh, like, res, like, I think that's what you're speaking of, right? Uh, that in some communities, we took, we've, to answer your question, we've looked at that, like light pole charging and things like that in the community where you could put chargers on light poles and some various techniques we've, we've investigated. Uh, but we haven't really been successful at finding an uh, answer to that. Uh, so we rely really, uh, as what Amy was saying, on commercial properties, uh, businesses, local businesses. And we try to get businesses to encourage that when they go home at night, they still have those charging stations available to people, to people like you that want to just charge overnight there because it doesn't affect them. Typically, it, they're not paying for that electricity that's used at the station. Technically, you guys are paying for it with the Plug-in Everywhere program. So we're trying to encourage that kind of thing, but actual street parking charging, so far we haven't really been successful at coming up with an answer for those things. Yeah, and um, you know, I think- uh, Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, and you know, this is uh, completely evolving all the time. So we, it's, it's things that we're working on and we really are trying to target um, just really more at-home charging because we know people really like that. I think Daniela had a great, uh, comment about she likes the chargers that are in city recreation centers. Those are close to home and can exercise during the wait. And we're very intentional when we work with our community stakeholders for deployment of this infrastructure to make sure that we're placing um, the charging, if not in multifamily, but in public areas that are either close to a green belt or you know near a place where you can grab coffee um, or hop on a metro bike and, and tour the city um, while you wait. So. Um, we're definitely working on shifting that behavior, um, you know, and also making sure that we're, you know, co-collaborating co with places like gas stations. So we have that model that's already built. So we, we are working on all these things. Um, you know, our DC fast chargers are, are deployed in clusters right now, close to the interstate to really um, support those high mileage vehicles. Um, uh, so yeah, it, it is um, kind of a moving target, um, but we, we are working on it. We have looked at the uh, street parking and I'm sure it's just a continuing conversation. Yeah, I'd just like to throw in for multifamily and even for street parking, um, 110 volt uh, outlets for people to charge are also really useful. Um, you know, and a lot of people don't, even lighting circuits, and parking garages and multifamilies, a lot of them you can tap off of them and now that they've gone to LEDs and whatnot, there's plenty of power to run a 120 volt outlet for uh, charging at three or four miles an hour, which is all that a lot of people need if they plug in every night. 
you uh, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with you and you know that's that's what i do with my own charging for my evs i just pull into the garage and i don't have level two i just use a regular wall outlet and i'm a mom of two teens i'm driving all over the place and that's really all i need i, I mean it really is what i need and we really want everybody else to have that too we've been working with um, some of our apartment complexes to um, deploy some what we're calling a level one um, pilot to try to get a bank of level one um, outlets. There's some nice, finally, some aesthetic and durable infrastructure that's been created that we can deploy, and it's just finding the right partner that will that will do it. Um, so you're you're right there, uh, exactly where we are in the conversation. And also, I'd like to add that often it's much cheaper for the host, the, the landowner. To give away free electricity than to put in metered outlets. We we, we agree completely. Uh, you know, believe it or not, it's difficult sometimes to. Uh, you know, it's it's just new to everybody, and so apartment communities are are uh, quick to try to just do one level two, uh, and they almost use it as kind of a billboard. Look, we got charging infrastructure. Hey, you know. But hey, we're great. We're green property. Come, come check us out. You know, so it's almost like a, it, it's it's not like you say, Lauren. It, it's if we could get a bank of level one going, that's a lot of what most people need, and the cost would be it wouldn't be ten thousand for the installation. It'd be you know you could get a bank for a thousand, and then your trickle charging, your trickle electricity is 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 pennies on the dollar. So you're you're exactly right. We're, we are we're trying to get these pilots going in a couple of places so we can show that we can show that model. Believe it or not, it's just difficult to convince people sometimes. So, um, but good good points. You you should uh, maybe hang out with us and, and walk around and talk to some of these multi family. I'm kidding. Oh, I'd love to, but I'm in California. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got you guys are you guys are doing some good stuff out there. Yeah, we still have issues with the multi families and convincing people just to to run a conduit from the overhead light down to an outlet um, mm. is, is difficult because people think, oh, it's going to be on a different circuit. It's like, yeah, well, you've, you've gotten rid of the, uh, I mean, it was designed, the circuit was designed for fluorescence. You've replaced them with LEDs. So you've got plenty of extra power for charging the car or two. Yeah, you're, you're right. Check back with us in March. Hopefully we have a couple of properties that are doing it uh, and we'll have it, we'll have it launched in March, hopefully. Okay, we're getting really close to time, so I want to make sure that I get a chance to mention that Daniela is asking about the, the the reason why the DC fast chargers got moved off of the EV Anywhere program and whether or not you feel like there's a chance that at some point they may return. Well, Amy, I'll take that one. Uh, the, the short answer is um, fast charging is different. The Plug in Everywhere program is set up, you know, for people who need to charge for a few hours or, or several hours, $4.17 a month. Uh, it's really a program set up to kind of let people know what their pricing is. $50 a year is what it equals out to. But the fast charging is a little bit different. Uh, Carl says it, and I forgot this, the way he says it, but it's like uh, charging is different for different people at different times. And so Char fast charging is really for us is you're, if you're coming, we, we wanted to set it up where if you're coming in from San Antonio or Houston or Dallas, you can quick get a quick charge when you come into town. So then you can get, get around town easy or high mileage vehicles that really need it like Ubers and Lyfts and uh, delivery drivers or somebody's just in a pinch and they need a fast charge. But we don't want people to sit. What we've learned is, and Tesla does its model too. We don't want to sit, we don't want people to sit there for two hours plugged into a fast charger when it only took them 20 or 30 minutes to charge up their car and then they're off having dinner for two hours and they're holding that spot up. What we're learning is we're looking at behavior in the community and, uh, and we're also trying to encourage certain behavior, right? And so the 20 cents plug in to plug out, plug out is to make sure that you guys understand you got to get up and get on that fast charge, get the, char get the electricity you need and, and go ahead and get off of it. So we can get somebody else in there. We anticipate those starting to, you'll start to see, you know, one day, hopefully we're going to have a situation where there's not enough fast chargers. Now we want, we want it to be an issue that we don't have enough fast chargers for people. Uh, but right now, like, for example, and I hope that I answer your question, but uh, there's a company called, gosh, I forgot the name of it. Amy will help me, but uh, it's a Uber, Uber or Lyft. It's like a TNC, which, 
uh, and it, but it's all electric and it just launched in Austin a couple months ago. And Earth ride. Earth ride. Earth rides, yeah. So, uh, and, and you know, we're agnostic as a community, but we love companies like this who come to town uh, and, you know, the, the companies so far is, is off to a great start, all electric vehicles, and they're using those fast chargers as part of their program to charge those cars up throughout the city uh, for the drivers. And, and so they chose Austin for one of the reasons is because of our infrastructure and things that are in place already. So we don't want them sitting on those chargers either. We want them to get on and get off and get on their way. Um, so hopefully that answer, Amy might be able to fill any gaps I missed. Handled it, you know exactly what our thinking is right now. Okay. But, 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 let me add to that real quick. We we want it. Our goal is to make it always cheaper than gas, always affordable. Uh, we're encouraging adoption right now, so you know nothing's nothing's set in stone for the rest of our lives. We'll we'll see this continue to evolve. It, Twenty-one cents a minute may maybe maybe not quite right the answer, but we wanted to make sure that it was. That it's always going to be cheaper than gas, so you know you never have to worry about that. All right, we've reached the hour, so I want to thank you both for joining us today and and sharing what's going on. Um, one last uh, opportunity to share where we can keep track of what you're up to. Yeah, if you join us on our Facebook page, um, it's I put it in the chat. It's Facebook Austin Energy Electric Vehicles. Um, that that's a great way to to get in touch with us, and and we're following that too. Um, also, you know, visit our our web page that I dropped in there for the latest uh, news as well. And um, you'll also see a lot of our team. If if you are on LinkedIn, we are on there quite a bit and um, we're announcing kind of the latest and, and the greatest in, in technology and transportation electrification. Um, so, you know, go ahead and find us there um, as well. Yeah, and I'll just add to that. If you have any questions, you can, you can once you join Facebook's uh, Facebook page, we are constantly reviewing that and we try to answer pretty quickly back to y'all. Uh, and you can always uh, do that or you can also reach us at pluginaustin.com and, and send a message and we have somebody that, that answers those emails as well. And you can always, if you've got a specific answer, a question for me, Bobby, uh, you're welcome to ask me uh, uh, or on the chat on, the, on there, say, hey, I want, can you ask Bobby about this or get Bobby to get in touch with me? Uh, you know, we're a small community still of, of, of uh, electric vehicles and, and electric vehicle community small still. And I know a lot of you out there and I've known Aaron for a while now. Uh, and hopefully next year, you'll see us more face-to-face. -face. We, we, we hope to get back out in the community. Oh, let me leave you with this. Uh, November 12th through the 14th is this great Electrify Expo that's coming to town. And again, we typically aren't promoting necessarily companies, but this is just a real win. It's a, it's, they're gonna have the latest, greatest cars out there. It's all outdoors, it's at Coda. Um, we're gonna be there and be involved, hopefully in some capacity. Uh, you might see Stevie out there, T-shirts. But you ought to go check it out because it's you're, it's a ride. It's like it's like a giant ride and drive event. But they're going to have the latest greatest trucks that you haven't seen. I think the Hummer might be out there. There's going to be some cool stuff. So definitely go check that out. Electrify Expo. Perfect. Um, so as a reminder, um, you can find Austin EV at austinev.org, um, and all EVs and EV enthusiasts are welcome. Uh, but if you want to support our efforts, please consider joining the Electric Vehicle Association through the link that you will find there um, and selecting our group as your chapter. Have a great Drive Electric Week.